we now look at the taxation of cooperative society that that is saving and credit cooperative society and here we are talking about circus we are talking about the circus so how do we tax the saving and credit cooperative society first of all we define so that you can be able to differentiate the circus and other cooperative society points to note that circle are cooperative societies where members save and that's what we call saving and credit cooperative society and also they can get a credit or loan from that society and it's usually from what they have saved and that's why you know Mary here because we said cooperative society exists to improve the economic welfare of the members when you save you are told that you can borrow like three times your own four times you are uh, not your own but you are saving four times you are saving so it is to help you to develop yourself but in that case sometimes you have to get guarantee for you to get that particular loan point number 1 is that point number 2 point number 2 is that circles are taxed at the corporate tax rate of 30% on the total taxable incomes so what we are trying to say is that circles are specialized company and that's why you are looking at them under specialized company number 3 so you just need to determine the taxable income and then go ahead and apply the rate to know the tax that is supposed to be paid the question is how do we get the total taxable incomes so that give us now to the point number 3 so the taxable income of a circle consists of the total of the following total means that you just add them together and then you go ahead and tax them so number 1 or a so that is the first taxable income of a circle 50% of the gross so here we have 50% of the gross interest uh, from non members let me add here interest income interest income from non members that when a sacco get interest from non member you only tax 50% of that the 50% interest don't tax tax 50% and who are the non members any entity any person who is, who is outside the membership of that sacco and we have mentioned these ones like banks a sacco can save with a bank it get the interest a sacco can open a fixed deposit uh, account with a bank it get the interest bank is not a member so we tax 50% of the gross also take note of the gross because we don't deduct any expense relating to that interest uh, another source of non member interest is government treasury bills and bonds so you take 50% you tax but there's a point we have posted there in bracket which is very very important that interest from members is usually is usually exempted from tax so if the sacco get interest from member and remember that is one of the major source of the income because sacco exists to give members loan so they get interest when they give, give, give the members loan but that interest is exempted from tax we are going to see reason why later on but that is one of the taxable income number 2 of another taxable income so another taxable income is 100% of the gross non qualifying dividends now this non qualifying dividends are the one that we looked at from the start when you are looking at the taxation of the investment income we say there are three categories of interest interest exempted from tax qualifying interest so for exempted you not tax for qualifying withholding tax is fine for non qualifying withholding tax is not fine so that is the one that you take 100% of the gross don't deduct any expense don't deduct the, deduct the tax the gross 100% point number 3 of another taxable income so point number 3 is what you call 100% of net rental income so you get the net rent rental income take 100% now how do you get the net rental income net rental income is equal to gross rental income minus allowable rental expenses so these are expenses that are incurred to uh, in addition to the renting for example if you have a rental property you may pay caretaker salary you may pay repair expenses those that are allowable deduct them from the gross then whatever you get tax 100% of that particular income and i want you to note that this is the only time we talk about expenses of a circle 
when you are getting the net rental income. Otherwise, you will not find us talking about any other expense anywhere. Point number four. So, we are saying the fourth taxable income is 100% of the gross income from front office saving activities. What is the income from front office saving activity? This is the income from non-core activity of a circle. See, the circle is formed for members to save and members to get credit. So any activity relating to that is the core activity. Now, here we are talking about another activity other than that saving and credit. A good example is, there are some circles which do some banking activities. You see, a circle is not supposed to be doing a banking activity. It's not a bank. But there are some circles you can deposit money in the morning and withdraw in the evening. You are not putting that money for saving purpose, you know, saving and credit so that you can get a credit in the future. So when that circle charge you for withdrawal or depositing, other than for saving purpose, that is from non-core activity, saving and credit, that is what you are calling a FOSA income. Now, for those circles that have banking activity, they might give you an ATM. So you go to an ATM machine, you withdraw money, you are charged some fee there. That fee is a FOSA income because the circle is not supposed to give you an option of you withdrawing money anytime you want. So that is what you are saying, FOSA activity. So that income, we tax 100% of the gross. But you are noting, income from back office saving activities, what you call BOSA. I put into brackets here, BOSA is usually exempted from tax. What is a BOSA activity? BOSA activity is any income from what they do, from what they were formed to do. A good example is SACO, member save, get credit. Now we can have a member who go to a SACO and want to take a loan. Now for those that carry out front office activities, like banking activity, you go to the banking, banking hall, you are told, your loan cannot be processed at the front office. Go at the back office, you'll meet some credit officers there. And now you go to the back office to, get, uh, to find your credit officer there and you get your loan processed. Now, in that process, you can be charged the loan processing fee. That loan processing fee is a back office income to the circle. And so that is exempted from tax. That is number four. Another taxable income. So I did it here. So after number four of another taxable income of a circle is number five. So, the fifth and the last one is 100% of any other taxable income received by a circle. So, if a circle get any other income that you have not mentioned there, and that income is taxable, take 100% and tax it. So, that is how we tax the cooperative society. Those that are circles and those that are not circles. <laughs>